and, and it was there for a couple of years. And you, you like when we first tried to uh, open the lid, you could you see this little arm come up and try to close it. <laughs> I think we still revisit that. Yeah. It's at Barkley Canyon, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah. So. <laughs> more crusts. Would a thin crust like this be, this was an event over sedimentation? Seems hollowed out underneath or is it? So I think that they are, they're perhaps not volcanic, but okay. entirely manganese. Mm -hmm. because oh, okay. It's very thin and, oh. and yeah. there's a bunch of sediment underneath. That makes sense. That's very cool. Then. Oh. It's kind of like the area we saw before with all the little nodules eventually kind of merging together into a mm -hmm. to a crust. But now we're getting into this more lumpier looking stuff, which is uh, probably volcanic breccia or just broken up lava flows that have been coated and cemented by the by the manganese crust. Viewer wants to know if you've seen any other examples of deep sea creatures using ocean trash as a home. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I've seen a, a what do you call those? Like those really shiny balloons, like a mylar, oh, mylar uh -huh. balloon that had uh, it said Feliz Cumpleaños. It was down in the as in was Basically, yeah, like yeah. Quite, and there were anemones living on that. I remember that. We were talking about dating the balloon <laughs> <laughs> briefly. I'm sensing a trend, dating the balloon, yeah. dating the Budweiser can. The paper will be out soon. <laughs> <laughs> So as this gets steeper, we'll still be going 0.2 knots. We'll just, and we'll try to rem remain as stretched out as we can, but it, there will be less time for on the fly sampling, but we can always do the whole rever reverse maneuver to try to get back. Okay, just we keep that in mind. In terms of a planned sampling stop, uh -huh. uh, it's not till 3,300 meters, but... 33, Roger. So it, it's probably another move or two away. Sure. But if we see something really exciting, we, we may ask for a flying reverse Renato, which is the <laughs> you just described. Thank you for that. <laughs> Bob in Ohio wanted to know about seeing fish. And I think yesterday we talked about how some fish are attracted to Hercules in the light and some are moving away quickly. So it's kind of hard to know for sure. We got there. Oops. You want to look at the crinoid there? No, it's fine. Okay, Roger. If you knew it was a crinoid. <laughs> Photon advantage. Photon advantage, yes. Adam, do you have any idea of the metal concentrations in those ferromanganese crusts? Uh, not specifically, but these this area is particularly enriched in cobalt relative to other crusts around the ocean basins. Brian in Michigan would like to know if large surface weather events cause any changes in the currents at this depth. Uh, I think to some extent, yes, especially like big high pressure or low pressure systems. Um, but I think what, uh, 
what's real interesting is that these bumps on the seafloor interact with even the slow moving currents down here and uh, enhance kind of turbulence and mixing in, in the water column that extends, you know, well up towards the surface. Okay, I hear you. Okay. Video is off headset for a little bit. I have to go to the uh, data logger spot and uh, restart the closed captioning scripts. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Dave. One of our viewers is asking, what are the fish species that we most expect to see at this depth? Mm. Not awesome. a lot of fish specialists on this. <laughs> we did see eels. Yeah, we saw a snipe dive. eel. Um, Rat-tailed fish. Rat-tail is probably the most common mm -hmm. down here. Uh, but the bathysaurus we saw and chano. Chonacops, everybody's yeah. favorite, Chonacops. Had some great video footage of it on the last dive on our watch. Thanks to Dave. Question for our ROV pilots. If the ROVs somehow become detached from the cable, can they self-resurface? That's a very interesting question, um, one that we have recently tested. <laughs> Would you like to know the answer to that? I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it depends on which combination of vehicles. <laughs> uh, Argus does not have any flotation at all. It's quite heavy. Uh, Hercules... Uh, does have syntactic foam, which makes it, uh, which can make it buoyant, and it's usually trimmed to be um, buoyant under no thrust. Um, so if Hercules was to be detached somehow, um, which would be difficult because we have not only do we have the tether connecting the the two vehicles, but there's also a, a lift line, so that would have to sever in some way, in addition to the tether take quite a bit um, if that was the case then it would float to the surface if it was attached to Argus still then Argus would sink to the bottom and Herc would float above it like a balloon and if you'd like to if you have any interest in what that looks like there's a highlight video of a recent recovery we did when that exact scenario happened All right, I have a slight correction of what kind of fish we've seen. I said a snipe eel, but it was actually a either a sorcerer or sorceress eel. Oh, yeah, that one was very neat yesterday. That was gorgeous. Just going to do a quick Doppler. Sure thing. Thank you. I'm waiting for a good USB. If you can see on the video feed, we're, we're seeing a lot of this lumpy manganese-coated basalt. But occasionally you'll see some parts that look dusty, dusted with sediment and some parts that look clean. And those clean parts have uh, been because of grazing animals that are going across the surface 
uh, probably looking for microbes and and uh, other bits of food. Sometimes we see a little critter at the end of those uh, feeding trails. Yeah, not really seeing anyone now at the end of these feeding trails. But. Max from Finland would like to know why we're not seeing many sponges or corals in this particular area. Any correlations you can already talk about? Well, yesterday on the, on the previous dive, we did see greater concentrations at shallower depths, but also along the tops of ridges where you get increased uh, current flow. And so it may be that we've not yet reached the depths and regions of current flow where uh, that are most suitable for those organisms. Uh, but we have not explored enough to, to really make any kind of great guesses at why uh, certain corals and sponges are found in certain areas and not others. Are you going for that white thing in the sand? There's one on the, okay. Yeah. It's also something pink to the right. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone's home. viewer wants to ask if it's determined how the ROVs became detached earlier, earlier expedition. There was a mechanical failure in the... Can you look right, Jessica? There's something floating in right there. In the tether termination, or the uh, cable termination. Ooh. Oh, the little floaty? Yeah. yeah. Jelly. Good challenge. Oh, <laughs> oh, so cute. Huh? All right, we want to be as head as we can as we as we go up this slope. Like stretched out, probably. So, we'll have a lot of time to look at stuff. Otherwise. Okay. Sounds like someone's gotten off the hype train. <laughs> <laughs> gotten. It's this day off. Yeah, I'm in the practicality train today. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone must be uh, on board at the precise time. <laughs> I'm always, uh, yeah, I'm get, I have to turn into buzzkill mode. <laughs> you really do it well, Rennie, though. Yeah. Dry delivery. <laughs> <laughs> if you were wants to know what we're hoping to find today in terms of Ooh, there's sampling, a little, or uh, what is that? I think that's similar to what we saw before uh, that cucumber. I think they get really small. Several of them. There's another one right there. Yeah. This is a flat bit in the terrain. Yeah. Leveled out. Can we zoom on the white thing, or are we running out of time? No, we're fine. Here we go. Oh, that's a, at the end of a feeding trail, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I wonder if it's one of those split barnacle. It looks oh, like No, I think that we wanted to collect one of those, right? We did. Right? That was on the hit list. Go ahead and list. push on in there, please. 
We should have time because it's flat up ahead. Okay. Um, I can stop this move. Yeah, it is yeah. one of those. What did they call it? Slit. Slit, slit barnacle. Slit or a slit limpet? Limpet. Slit limpet. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, it sounds like a great band name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm holding position. Argus can swing over you. It looks like we'll be okay terrain-wise, but we will still have to be swift about it. Okay. okay. All right, let's get this. Jake, it's all you. All right. I'll get you a better shot of this guy. Sorry for the bounciness. There you go. So cool. Oh, That's this really one cool. called Twisted Sister Limpet. <laughs> what, what kind of limpet? Split. Split. Slit. 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 No, Slit. No P. S-L-I-T. Slit. 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 Oh. Slit. All right, full wide there, Dave, please. <laughs> hey, Renny, you want to do me a favor? Stick lock? Yeah. Please. Ready? Actually, no, I need to get closer. Never mind, right. sorry. All right, go ahead, Jake, if you want to start getting set up there. So, so for those we're in jar six now. Yeah. Watching at home, we're using what we call the slurp sampler. This is a pump that pumps water up that pipe and uh, into some canisters. Flush first. Near the yeah. top of the ROV, and the idea is that uh, we'll suck in the the sample. It'll go up that tube and get uh, deposited in one of those canisters that has a filter on the outlet so that, it, there, that it stays inside. I'll watch here. I'll watch here. All right. Now we're getting better flow. That's great. All right. Go ahead and get into position. There's a note from Shore that it might need need to be scraped with the slurp a little bit to get it to detach. Okay. Roger. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Which jar are we going for? Oh, we finally got two. Yeah. All right. Number two. Let me make sure it's actually locked up there. Yeah, we got two now. Okay. Hey. Do 100%. You're at 100. Oh. Nice. Nice job. Went up the two. And full wide there, please, Dave. What's the sample number on this, sir? This is going to be 028. Go Let's ahead see. and give it a milk there, and I'll get pulled out in front For of the us. the viewer who just asked, the slurp. Is collecting a there slit is. limpet. Awesome. Zeroed. It has made it into the jar. What'd you call that move, Jess, that you had Jake just do? A milk? Oh, yeah, milking the, milking the suction. Yeah. And sometimes because we have this uh, large tube. Need a boogie. Sorry, one sec. No worries. Yeah. You want to come up on Argus there? Yeah. Uh, because we have that long tube, um, we basically need to mm, kind of jiggle work it? the tube a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. jiggle it. Make sure that there is nothing clogged and, you know, milk the milk the suction. All right. We, yeah, you got fish eye. You're all right. Yeah. If you need to come off a little bit in order to get in a safe spot. Welcome to do that. Oh yeah, no, we're all good now. All right, Jake. Nice grab.
like our sea cucumber lost some legs there. Yep. Huh. I'm sorry, Jake. Do you mind going back for a sec? I'll put on oh, the yeah. flush. Thank you. Very cool. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to call that move back in. Roger. Thank you, Ernie. One of our viewers had asked about our what we are hoping to see or collect, and we have two objectives for the dive. One is to identify the benthic fauna, and the other is to collect rock samples along the transect of the seamount. That's we still a on nice sea? purple color. Yeah. Yeah. We take a look at that and then whatever's in the background. Stick. Right. Is it a stick? Okay. No, I think it's a <laughs> shadow. Well, I think it's, or maybe it's trash. Um, it could be a pipe. Can't tell. That's not on our list, is it, Adam? This thing, no. Are we uh, sure? I don't, no, look? no, I will look, yeah. All right. Oh, Got him push on in there at this beautiful little dancer. Wow. Okay. Oh, I there, please. Does look like trash. Does look yeah. Nope, Looks not like there's on a our coral list. next to it. I'm pushing on that guy there these days. Oh yeah, little coral. Ooh, woodfall. And there's a crab on it. Yeah. Huh, rusty pipe. There's definitely people interested in wood and the kind of boring organisms that eat into it. I think this is a piece of I think they're pipe. exciting. Um, I don't know. It's hard to tell if it's metal or wood. Oh, Take you guys think it's it. metal? Uh, if I don't know, it might be a lot more rusty if it was metal. Okay. It's hard to say. You want us to poke it? Yeah, sure. It's flat. Are right, you gonna come full wide there, please, Dave? Oh, why hello, <laughs> hello. Well, Jake, it's set up. We got a nice little dancer. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Go ahead and just grab it. That's what it is. Grab it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Give it a spin. Yeah. Not just whack whack the crab. Mm. <laughs> All right. That's well, good. That does look like we wood. Get a good shot. Yeah, it looks like wood, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know where this will fit, though. It's pretty long. Maybe. Might fit diagonal in the big box. Throw it in. Roger. All right. How about we get a little ahead and then we'll stow it? Yeah. Hold I'm on. marking Good. the position here. Roger that. All right, Jake, you want to hold your bam bam stick? Yep. Thank you. This is zero two nine when we collected. Is that right? Correct. Bam bam. Bam bam. <laughs> Another fish thing. 
some odd sampling today. <laughs> Picks up some trash, some pigs, some steaks. A 90s rock band. 90s rock band, limpet. Slim biscuit, biscuit, what is it? <laughs> Slit limpet. Slit limpet. <laughs> you guys want to know a story? Oh, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jenny, take your headset off. Okay. <laughs> your mouse. There was a, uh, I don't know, like a 60s all-female punk rock band called The Slits. That's right. They were pretty influential uh, for later bands. My kid's elementary school Spanish teacher uh -huh. was a member of no The Slits. Way. Uh -huh. No That's way. No way. An older uh, Spanish woman. <laughs> that looks like uh, um, Balula. Balula. I agree with you. Is it? What is that? Umbalula, um, C pen, I believe. C pen, okay. All right, Jake. All right, I guess about to stow it. Or, or an octocoral or something. Maybe can we spin back around to it after we stow this? Yeah, for sure. I know sometimes we put wood experiments down to see o over time as a, what, like you said, what pours into it. So although we don't know the date of when this dropped, I'm sure, like you said, there'll be people interested in what. What bin do we want to go for, guys? Um, e and F are both open, the big ones. Okay. Yeah, so maybe try putting it out of the diagonal. Ooh. It's kind of big, guys. Maybe if we put it in uh Put an E and maybe it'll... E I don't with the front sticking out? <laughs> yeah, guys, this is looking too big for us. You can kind of see, get a better scale and... Yeah, yeah. it's all the way in. Yeah. What about the porch? Uh, the porch isn't really that much bigger. Oh, okay. There. Well, if you want to... We could we could break it p potentially with mango. With mango like <gasps> oh, yes, let's try that. Okay, Jake, <laughs> bring it around the front there. Right. I'm just gonna hold the ship. Is that is that all right with everybody? Or do you want to keep? I think we yeah, can that's keep good. Going yeah. If you want to. What's that? I think we can. Yeah, we're just gonna. <coughs> this operation will probably take a bit. Okay, sure. Yeah, because I wanted to turn around, and look at that pink thing. All right. I'll get Mongo out there in front here. If you were wanted to know what the purple thing was that we saw dancing above it. Uh, that was a holothurian, a sea cucumber. There's a huge variety of I'll come colors over to you and there, shapes. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's get a little bit more like that. All right. Can't wait to tell the next watch what we were up to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake, go ahead. Why have you only moved 40 meters? <laughs> well. <laughs> Let me tell you. It's not you wouldn't believe the, the materials we found. <laughs> Wood into you like to know. Wood. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great there. Awesome. Closing it now. Okay. Anybody practice with a um, wishbone? This try would be so embarrassing. Working it out that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I got more in the middle? Yeah. So we must be able to build bigger, stronger arms. Work it. Yeah, okay. That's a good idea. And then try just pushing out that way so we go away from the HD yeah. cam. Yeah. Oh. 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 Okay, hold up. No. Oh, maybe it's the... I'm surprised that just closing the jaws all the way doesn't crush it into two. Yeah. Maybe it's not super old. <laughs> Let me rotate a little bit. Too far. Uh, and it works for you. There you go. Right. Ready? 
I'll hold my finger on the valve in case it's... Eesh. Oh, it's... It's breaking. Where is moving, Mongo? What's happening? Try giving it a wiggle. Nice. That is... This is new. Dirty log. This is new work. This is Find new out work. it's like a rusty iron <laughs> bar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Nice. All it's right, rushed. which piece do we think will fit? Uh, probably not that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll go with the small one. Yeah. Drop this one. What am I doing? Drop yeah. the big one. Drop right. the big. Go for the small. Still good with Argus. All good here. Thanks, Rainy. Yep. Okay, you ready? Hand off. Hand off. Ready? Oh, wait, one second. All right. All right, got it. Got it. Oh, I didn't know. Awesome. So that'll probably fit one in one of the smaller boxes, perhaps? Or do you think it's still too big for that? Yeah, we can do smaller boxes with this, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do that. All right, switch it over. Um, so which small one we want to go for? B. The yeah, the only one that's occupied is A. Okay. Thanks. B. Yeah, go for B. Awesome. Nice. Nicely done. Excellent. Very cool. I think we get the fun watch, guys. I think yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. One of our viewers says, perhaps the deepest stick break in the history of humankind. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. Actually, Beautiful job. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Guinness on speed dial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that white thing on the log? Oh, yeah. Maybe we picked the wrong one. Maybe we picked oh. the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see this now? Okay, push on in there, please, Dave. It might fit. I mean, this could fit in the big one. A little urchin. Oh. Urchin was in there. How cute. Pretty cool. That's definitely boring into the wood. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get you a better shot here. That's a worse shot. Got any more zoom on that, Dave? That's it. Reg. Nice. All right, let's take a peek to your right. Okay. And then we'll keep moving. Me on our way? Full wide, please. Awesome, grab there, Jake. Yeah. All right, it knows off to our right, you said? I think so. Umbalula for the hunt. I think it's right there. Porch directly down. See that porch? Yep. Oh, right below. Yeah. Other, other. Yeah, sorry. Oh, bubble sorry. cam. Bubble cam. Yeah. yeah. It's a great opportunity to see what the currents are doing down here. Since we put a little bit of mud in the water. Really right now they're kind of moving because of Herc's wash, but. Uh, Oh, yeah. Thanks, Rennie. Mm -hmm. 
little soupy here. All right there, Dave, go ahead. A lovely one. I think that's an Umbalula, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like, it seems like all the polyps are kind of clumped up facing upwards. Mm -hmm. Normally they're a little more out. Mm -hmm. Got any, uh, do you have a clade ID on that? <laughs> <laughs> so that dark stuff we can see inside, is that the uh, kind of internal skeleton? I don't know if that's, I thought it was a soft, soft octocoral. Sorry guys. I don't know. Um, umbalula. According Umbalula. to Steve. Umbalula, yeah. Wait, did he say Umbalula or another? He said yeah. Umbalula. Yeah. It's the, I believe, the closest name relative to the Umbalula. Model there, please, Dave. <laughs> closest <laughs> in name relativity? Yeah. Hmm. In fact, their full name is Umbalula Umbalula, according to Steve. Hmm. Wow. All right, do we want to keep moving there? Let's get going. Yeah, let's get going. All right, I'm going to call it in. We're flat so you can zoom ahead. Roger that. And guys, I'm going to wash off my porch real quick. All right, back row, I'm just going to do some spinning really quickly to wash the porch off. So please stand by. Is that our sediment somehow? The one in front of us, no. Hmm. Um, unless it comes off our light bars, but yeah, most likely not. But the one from the behind us, that was definitely us. Probably all you got for now. Rennie, can you give me a quick uh, like zoom out on the high pack? Can do. So so far since being on the bottom, we've gone about four hundred. 50 meters. Okay. And uh, from where we are to the, this point right here, it's 875. Another 500. What's that? Another 500 meters. Uh, eight, 870. 870. 870. Ooh. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. All right. We'll have to get a little, a little more efficient, perhaps. 
Yeah, it'll yeah it'll probably be we'll be swiftly moving up the uh, the slope once we hit it. Curious to see what kind of terrain it is if it's just a you know flat. Yeah, I'm so I'm rocky or a little surprised so far. We've seen this kind of flat sediment and crust. Yeah. One of our viewers wants to know if any of you have a particular favorite depth zone for exploration, and why? That's weird, isn't it? What mm, is that? A little strange. Can I do a quick zoom on this guy, please? I can tell there's a little fish in there, or if it's just our eyes deceiving us. No, kind of. Can you go any tighter on that? Bioturbation, or yeah. Right? Hmm. Reminds me of uh, ant lions. You guys ever seen those out mm -hmm. in the desert? Yep. Oh yeah. What is that? I have no idea. I don't think it's a linear structure. I don't think it's anything. Oh. I think whatever it is is that down like below. tube thing coming out? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Give us a better shot back here. Can just be a worm? All right, let me sit down. Sorry, you want to come a little wide there, Dave? Oh, well, now we <laughs> won't be able to see it at all. Uh -huh. You guys ready for some blinding? All right, go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. I think we're just looking at a pile of sand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, full wide. You tried. Something moved it. I had a question about how deep our ROVs can go, and that's about 4,000 meters, a little over 13,000 feet. I haven't explored enough depths to have a favorite yet, um, going back to the previous question. Yeah, I definitely don't have a favorite. It's kind of wherever the volcanoes are. <laughs> I think it's the biologist that might have favorite depths because, you know, it's more... Uh, structure with uh, with depth but in terms of what biology is where but uh, for the geology all the depths are good depths I've heard uh, Bob called the very shallow steps the Cousteau layer, uh -huh. where all the kind of charismatic organisms are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying out the dust cloud that I created for us. It's kind of chasing us or something. Yeah. I think of it as, as the kind of the glitter you throw into the air is <laughs> like when you walk in a room and you do that as well. <laughs> I don't do that out here though. I mean, no, on it's the ship, kind of just going all over. Yeah. <laughs> but your uh, shoulder mounted glitter cannons, I think, are pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> shoulder mounted. <laughs> Oh, that's what we're going to get, I guess, right now. It 
That's a nice shot of uh, Herc from Argus. Looks a bit lonely. Mm. Air cloud there. To answer your question before, there's not a lot of current here. <laughs> yeah. Slowly starting to move. All good. We had a viewer ask if there would be noises or sounds at these steps. Yeah, hundred percent. There's uh Definitely noise that we're producing from from the ROV. There's very likely noise from ships at the surface. There's uh, noise from large marine mammals like whales that can be heard. And there's also noise from the uh, organisms that live down here. You know, the crabs, the, the fish, etc. Um, so there's a bunch of the research community that's interested in the ocean soundscape, you know, both what's produced naturally and what's anthropogenic. And I'm really excited about getting uh, some sensors down into the deep sea to understand what the soundscape is down there. I use like a like a microphone for the water, a hydrophone that just measures very slight changes in pressure as sound waves propagate through the through the water. <laughs> the challenge is to be able to place those hydrophones away from where you know you're making noise so you can hear the kind of background soundscape. There's some hydrophone arrays um, for Ocean Networks Canada, I think actually at the Barkley Canyon, Canyon site that we referenced earlier, that are listening to uh, methane bubbles. Yeah. And I think the idea is to have a test site where they can establish sound versus eventually towards sound proxy for volume of uh bubbles yeah flux yeah the yeah. the you know we tend to go to those sites and observe them at points in time but uh it's difficult to get a kind of continuous time series to know whether the amount of methane coming out changes with tidal cycles or seasonal cycles or in the event of like a big earthquake or something like that It's also another way you can detect eruptions in the ocean. That uh, generally the earthquakes that are produced are not large enough to see on seismometers on land, but you can put out these hydrophones and detect uh, sounds from volcanic eruptions and know when and where they're happening. Other, are you talking other than the ocean bottom seismometers? Well, ocean bottom seismometers, yeah, would be able to. To detect them but the way we use them right now they're battery powered so they kind of last a year and then you'd have to go out and, and change them out so we don't have nearly uh, as complete a network as we do on land um, Japan does Japan's got a pretty significant network wired in submarine yeah we've been installing them too for Ocean Hours Canada the Titan seismometers uh, off which coast on the Juan de Fuca plate okay. off of British yeah. Columbia Oh, okay, yeah. And oh, they're, they're connected by a cable, right? So they have uh, power and, and data telemetry. Uh, but out in the open ocean, 
you would have to uh, drop them and then go service them. But there is a network of hydrophones that are used to kind of monitor for nuclear tests. And uh, you can get that data from the Navy, I believe. Adam, have you ever wanted to know if there were any hydrothermal vents anywhere nearby? Yeah, it's it's unlikely on this chain of seamounts. Uh, I think they're volcanically inactive, and you would need magma to drive high-temperature hydrothermal circulation. Can we take a look at what's on the left? Hey, Jess, can Jess. we look at that uh, polythorium? Yeah, sorry. Um, but what you might see is low temperature flow because sometimes the seamounts act as a conduit between the ocean crust and and the ocean where otherwise there's this cap of sediment that prevents uh, can you check our uh, wish list please yeah All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. Does that look like O'Neill? Oh, yeah, kind of does. Hey, th I think this is on our wish list. Wish list, Raj. Uh, Jake, you want to pull the arm out there real quick? Steve is typing, yes, collect. Confirmed. Roger that. Steve, come full wide there, please, Dave. Do this one also on the fly, perhaps. Yeah, it's, it'll have to be uh, somewhat quick. Is this a, we think this is a slurp hose one, or? I think this is a slurp hose one, yeah. Okay. Steve says, slurp if we can. Not sure how rigid these are. Oh, Raj. Sorry for the slurp. Take you in a vacuum up the sediment there, please. Yeah. Clean up, <laughs> clean up the seafloor while yeah. you're down there. I'm going to flush you real quick there, Jake. Oh, it might be a little bit, now looking at it, it might be a little bit large. Yeah. Yeah, if it's rigid, too. Oh, it is. It is okay. rigid? I don't know. I said if, sorry. We can give it a try. If it gets stuck, we put it in the front there. I'll do a low suction so we can get a good gauge. Go ahead and push on there a bit there, please, Dave. All right. That's good. All right, we're at six. Yeah. Six is open, right? Yes. Okay. Roger. All right, go ahead, Jake. We'll do a comfortable 50%. That's kind of big. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to reduce suction a little bit here. We right. can drop it in forward bio box B. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. All right, full wide there, please. All right, full rock back. Just zero three zero. Zero three zero. All right, stand by there, one Jake. Tooling out. All right, starboard side, yeah? Yes. All right, go ahead, Jake, and then I'm going to have to run. Actually, you want to yep. hold it there, Jake, one? You want to freeze your arm? I'm going to come up. Good. You're going to have to come up with Argus, too. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Got it? Mm 
This sea cucumber is getting a joyride. Right. It's the fastest it's ever moved. Yeah. <laughs> uh. That's when we need microphones. <laughs> Be going wee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look up a little bit here, Jake. Up a little more. More of those limpets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slit limpets. Okay, much happier up here. Yeah, should be good. Way better. I can pause here for a second. Roger that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you there. Just in case you were wondering. That's the big boss back there <laughs> telling us what to no do. No confusion, no. Yeah. Uh, here I thought we were just going to keep it here, hanging out as a flag. Kind of looks like a tick. All right. Are you there, Jake? Nice. I think that'll be perfect. Yep. Hopefully. Zeroing now. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Drop Give it, it a little Drop bit. It. Of... <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great. A little more. Yeah. Ooh, nice. nice. Excellent. Get it. Really well done. Man, I love these flying grabs. <laughs> awesome. Adam's already preparing the speech when he hands over to the next watch. Well, we we collected 40 <laughs> samples. And we're going to have to come up. <laughs> Like, why didn't you guys start? We did start. <laughs> we just didn't get real far. <laughs> One sample per meter traveled. <laughs> All right. While you get that stowed there, Jake, I'm going to keep moving a little forward. There's a little Galathead. Nice. Well, let us get settled here on this new terrain and uh, take a look around, then we can start another move. We done. Sea star. Someone just whisper sea star. Yeah, microphone. <laughs> I, did. I do that often, but uh, <laughs> that's actually helpful. I was looking somewhere oh. else. <laughs> Crinoid. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not creepy at all, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic effects. This is the eight to twelve quiet car. 